Okay, today our lecture is going to be a new topic on single cell attack seek. Earlier in the second module, we talk about the technology attack seek. This is a way to profile open chromatin or accessible chromatin regions in the genome. Basically, we use a transposes which can go into the open chromatin and cut and then tag the end of the cut with different sequences. And this can then directly be amplified and uh, through high throughput sequencing sequenced out. And we can control the digestion conditions so that, and also select the relatively shorter fragments for sequencing. Um, in fact, when you do PCR amplification, always the shorter fragments get amplified more because it's just easier to get amplified. And so the short fragments usually mark the regions with open chromatin. That's why two cuts can happen nearby each other. And so after the reads are mapped to the genome, we look at peaks and those basically will give us all the open chromatin regions in the genome. And this is basically a collection of all the transcription factor binding sites that are present in that particular cell uh, population. It's a relatively fast and easy experimental technique, uh, especially it has the advantage of requiring very low starting material. You can use a few thousand cells, sometimes hundreds of cells, and so it very quickly gained popularity. Be, uh, people can use it to profile developmental tissues or tumor tissue or biopsies that normally are not doable with uh, ChIP-seq or DNA's hypersensitivity sequencing. And this technology has really undergone even more development in recent years. And now there is a single cell ataxy available. And uh, recently, this is a publication from uh, the Stanford group that developed the ataxy experiment. And they are also now collaborating with a commercial company, 10X Genomics, to make a machine with the reagent kit that you can buy to do this with a turnkey system. Um, the idea of ten, uh, single cell ataxy, at least with the, this system, is like this. So um, initially, this is the reagent you buy. Um, there are barcoded gel beads. And so every cell has barcodes, in, in different barcodes in different cells. Um, if we have a, a collection of cells, so these cells need to be made into single cell suspension or single cell nuclei in, in, in solution. Um, and then the cells can be treated with transposes to cut and, uh, and insert into the ligated sequence. And then um, in this 10x genomics machine, you can run the gel beads and uh, the single cell nuclei through the machine. And if it's right at the right speed that you can see here, uh, the single cell and the gel beads will be, uh, and, and then in this place there will be oil droplets. You can see here, there will be oil droplets that have just one gel bead and also one single cell. And then um, after this, um, the reagent for, for this is available on each gel bead. Basically the chromatin after the digestion will then be labeled with a different barcode in each cell because they are in the same droplet. As you can see here, these are open chromatin and uh, in different cells, they have a different cell barcode. Um, and then um, these chromatin can be amplified. The short uh, digested chromatin fragments, which are open chromatin, can be amplified. And then um, after removing the oil, all the chromatin fragments that are amplified will be together, but then if they are coming from different cells, they will have a different cell barcode. And then we can use high throughput sequencing to really sequence them out. And then use the cell barcode to figure out which of the fragment is coming from which initial single cell. And so this becomes a very powerful turnkey solution. And so single cell ataxy is now becoming very, very popular. Many, many groups are starting to use this in conjunction with their single cell RNA-seq to profile the epigenome of any complex tissue. I have a question. Yes. 
are the how, are the cells digested? Are the nuclei digested with the transposase before they're mixed with the beads or after? Yes, they are. They are digested before the bead, and so you are. They, they are still within the nuclei. And okay. So the digestion happened inside. You can see here, the transposition is already in the cell already, and then the droplets just to make sure that uh, the cell barcode. So before you break open the cell, they the the, the nuclei and the gel beads need to be in the same oil droplet. Okay. Yeah, that's how they can label all the chromatin with okay. one cell at a time. So the transpose is cuts, but you don't have the fragments yet. Because otherwise, how would you fig figure out which fragments belong to which cell? Right. Actually, um, this part, it, it, it only cuts and uh, uh, just just insert the, the different sequences inside, in, in, you can see in here. Okay. Yeah, so here you can see when it cuts, it just inserts the sequence. It's during the amplification, then the basically, because the adapters are inserted with the cut, only the short fragments will get amplified. Okay. And the barcodes are attached to the end of the amplified fragment. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, so in addition to the droplet-based single-cell attack seek techniques, over the last few years, there has been development in other platforms. The first is a plate or array-based. Uh, it's, it's similar. So basically, every well has, these can be 384 well plates or can be even smaller uh, little holes. Each hole will be able to fit in one cell and each hole will have a different barcode, and only one cell can fit in there. Um, and those are kind of under development as well. Another approach is the split pool approach. Basically, every time, it, this is similar to the split pool approach for single cell RNA-seq. Initially, when you have this, uh, the full cell population, you divide them up into, for example, 96 wells, and each one will have many, many cells. And then you add a little bit of a barcode, like a short barcode. And so all the cells in this blue well will have the same barcode. And then you pull them again and mix them. And then you split again into another, say, 96 well plate. And you continue to add to that barcode. And then in this case, again, only the cells with the same uh, in the same well will be added the same barcode. But because you do a split, pull, split, pull multiple times, at the end, most likely the only transcript or the, um, the only chromatin fragment that will have the same concatenation of uh, barcodes are those that are from the same cell. Uh, so this is also a very, very powerful approach. The advantage of the split pool approach is that per cell, the cost is lower, the reagent is easier. Um, although at each level, when you do the split pool, the ligation efficiency might decrease with every round. So you might lose some cells in the process. In addition, currently split pool is not a commercial solution yet. You have to work with a lab, learn the protocol, and try to do it, establish that protocol, which does take some time. So the current most popular approach is this 10x droplet-based approach because you just buy the machine, you get the reagent, very likely you'll get good quality data. Okay, um, so in the very early days when people were just developing the technology, they only do single cell ataxic of some complex tissues such as brain or tumor or uh, PBMC, the, basically the white blood cells in the blood. And then, but this is mostly to develop the technology and to make sure that you can do single cell epigenetic profiling. But really, any study on gene regulation at single cell re resolution, epigenetic profiling is only interesting in the context of understanding gene expression. And so once the technology development component is done, most people will be interested in doing single cell RNA-seq together with single cell ataxic on the same tissue or the same um, uh, sorted cell population. And so um, with this approach, uh, currently, yeah, so epigenetics is only interpreted in the context of gene expression. Currently with 10x genomics, um, the, the technology, what it can allow for you to do is, for example, if you can get the PBMC or the 
tumor sample in a single cell suspension, so all the single cells are kind of floating in a solution in the tube, you can separate this tube into two separate tubes. One will go through 10x genomic single cell RNA-seq. The other, after the transposis digestion or the insertion uh, treatment, you go through the 10x genomic single cell attack-seq um, pro procedure. At the end, you will get the two sets of data. Because they are coming from the same initial tissue, you hope that the cell population will be fairly comparable between the single cell RNA-seq and the single cell attack-seq. And so that's what people are doing currently. It's the same initial tissue or cell collection, but you are doing the single cell RNA-seq and the single cell attack-seq actually on different cells. So the barcode for the single cell RNA-seq and the barcode for the single cell attack-seq are not really matched one-to-one. -one. That's what's available with 10x Genomics. The company is working very hard currently on an even better technology, which is because for single cell RNA-seq, you only need to sequence the RNA, but for single cell attack-seq, you only need to sequence the DNA or the chromatin, right? So theoretically, you should be able to do this even on the same tissue and the same cell. Um, that would be actually even better. Basically, um, in, in those type of experiments in, in the future, you get your RNA-seq uh, from the, 10x, you get this a taxi from the same cell through another kind of procedure. But the, at the end, because well, they all go through the same uh, droplet approach to be labeled with the same cell barcode. And so afterwards, you will be able to use the barcodes to match each individual single cell RNA seq with the corresponding single cell attack seq reads. That would be coming hopefully in a year. Yes, we have a question. So the question is, how many cells are needed for a single cell RNA-seq and single cell attack-seq respectively? Um, so with single cell attack-seq, so usually when you run the machine, the cost is actually um, on the reagent and also using the machine. Therefore, um, every, every time people do try to load about 10,000 cells, so 10x genomics, Usually in each cell, it can give you, they recommend you load a little bit over 10,000 so that hopefully you will get good 10,000 cell readout. Um, therefore, if you have um, multiple samples, there is also another possibility to label the cells um, first. So, uh, sorry, to label the different samples first then you can multiplex multiple samples into the same 10x genomics run. So when you read the barcode, initially you read out, okay, that's sample one, sample two, and then you say this is the cell, uh, cell one in sample one, and that's cell three of sample two. And so basically these are all can be added into the barcode. And so each run you usually get people try to get you know, as close to 10,000 as possible. So if you have, yeah, usually if you have uh, only 10,000 cells, you load the machine because there are a lot of empty droplets and also some cells get doublets. So if, usually if you load 10,000, you probably only get like 5,000 uh, good readout. Okay, questions about the technology? Okay. So, yeah, so, but this is already a huge... Uh, sorry, one question. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. So for uh, at the attack seek, can you tell in more details, like, how we get the short fragment? I mean, like, my understanding is, like, if a, tra if a sequence is transposed at both ends and it actually gets cut, like, I'm not sure if that's correct. So basically, every time transposes, when it recognizes, it, it still cuts with open chromatin, but it also has slightly sequence preference. But once it goes in, it just inserts the, the, the purple and green sequence into the DNA. And so if you have, but, but they, they insert on different strands on different directions. And so basically, you just give it, you know, the, depending on the, your total cell amount and the, your transposes amount, you put it in there, it will, it will insert in, in there. And when you use PCR amplification, 
you use one of the green primers and the, the other purple primers, it's going to try to amplify all the pairs of purple with green that are facing each other. And, but because you can control the PCR reaction conditions, the long ones really don't really get a chance because it takes a long time for the two to reach each other. But if things are short, when you do the PCR, they do get amplified. Next round, they get amplified even more. Next round, they get amplified even more. And that's how you can have a, a big enrichment of the relatively shorter fragments. And that's, that's when the open chromatin regions, because there could be multiple uh, TN5 that get inserted in the allopation. Okay, so uh, the fragments are, so, so the nucleus is, pre-transpose uh, before like adding to beads. Right. And, and then the beads uh, add a barcode to the, to the fragment and, and then you do amplification and uh, wash off the beads. You can imagine the bead basically has PCR primers and uh, one PCR primer is the purple, the other PCR primer is the green except that in the end of the PCR primer, you add a barcode for the cell, right? And so the transpose is already inserted into the chromatin. And uh, once they are in the droplets, you just amplify. And only the short fragments get amplified. PCR always uh, uh, favors shorter fragments for amplification. Yeah, 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 sure. Okay. Yeah, so um, yeah, this is a really powerful technology and people are really using this to profile individual, like small amount of samples from blood, from brain, from developmental tissues, from uh, these complex like kidney or, 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 or tumor tissues, which is really quite powerful.